we're going to talk about how to saddle your horse and bridle your horse and prep yourself for your work in the saddle. When you're working with your horse and interacting with them, putting tack on, grooming them, that you are very aware of your energy and how you're moving around your horse. We are going to saddle up using Western tack today. So when I put my blanket on, I always want to start it forward and slide it back into place. The hair on their body runs from front to back. So I want to make sure that that hair slides in the same manner as it lays naturally on their body. A lot of times, if you put the saddle on and the pad slips forward, that hair binds, and then all of a sudden you're creating friction underneath their saddle pad, and it can lead to sore spots and actually damage the hair underneath the pad. So put it on, slide it back. I like to leave my pad just a little bit forward of where I want it to sit. When I put my saddle on, it's gonna pull that pad back a little bit itself. So there's a wear leather and you can see where my latigo sits. So I wanna leave it ahead of where I want it to sit on his heart girth when I get him saddled because the saddle's gonna pull this blanket back and slide everything into place. When I go to put my saddle on my horse's back, there's a couple options. Some people will take this offside stirrup and put it on the saddle horn. Okay, and then tuck all of this breast collar and cinch up as well. When I place my saddle on their back, I leave the stirrup hanging and the breast collar and the front cinch. Um, I'm tall enough and strong enough that I can get it up nice and high and place it gently on their back. I like my hips square to their shoulders. Then I'm gonna take it up and I actually take my right hip and give it a little pop as it's going up and over his back. And then I let my biceps do the work and place it gently on his back and not drop it into place. Take this saddle pad, make sure everything's straight and I like to tent it off his wither just a little bit so there's space in here when he goes to work and starts to collect that there's room for his wither and his back and neck to come up into that space. When I take my cinches down off the offside, I like to keep them on the keeper so I'll just let them down. Make sure there's no twists. Make sure that my pin on my cinch is still where it's supposed to be in my offside billet. Again, I have the shank in the crook of my elbow, so I have two hands to do my work with. Got my cinch down on the offside. So I take my latigo down. I like to take my left hand and stay connected to the horse so he can feel me coming. I'm not surprising him. As I'm doing up my cinch, I like to keep constant pressure on this latigo and methodically tighten this so it's not abrupt, it's not quick, and it's a steady kind of even pull. I think that's how we keep horses from being cinchy. When I get to the last loop on my latigo, this is the important one, I wanna take my right hand and I actually pull straight down and then I feed up with my left hand. So it's a really even pull and I'm not pulling out and kind of jerking on this latigo. I want it all to be even and constant. Put it in a pin and then same thing when I pull it out, even. Put the latigo away. I don't want my cinch to be too tight. I want it to be tight enough to hold my tack in place and I want him to feel this pressure for a little bit before I cinch him up and put my foot in that stirrup and get ready to ride. For the breast collar, I like to loop the tug strap and I have it on my horn. And what I do is I just pass it to my left hand and go under his neck. And then I'll feel, see if there's any twists. Undo the tug strap. I always put the ends of any leather in keepers and tuck them away neat and tidy. Your breast collar adjustment, the center of your D should be in the center of their pectoral muscles. So if you're using different tack on different horses, make sure you check that adjustment. And we are ready to bridle. Depending on the size of the bridle, I like to drop my bridle to the last hole and make it big so it's not too tight pulling it over their ears. Even if it's that horse's bridle, I always drop it a hole, bridle them, and then 
tighten it a hole. I just find it easier to bridle them and it's nicer on their ears and organizing their mane. I hold the bridle in my right hand. I hold the bit open with my thumb and my middle finger or my forefinger, whichever one you prefer. And then the curb strap just rests on my palm. So everything's organized and makes it a lot easier for us to bridle smoothly. When I take the halter off again, I keep this right side of the halter so he can feel it on that neck. I want to keep him in a spot that's really usable and he's paying attention. Bridle goes in my right hand. Keep the bit nice and open so it doesn't hit his teeth. My left thumb goes in the corner of his mouth. Gently slide it in so it doesn't hit his teeth. I usually always pet their nose after I put the bit in. I don't know, it's just a habit I have, but I don't think it's a bad one. Okay, this right hand is holding the bit in place. I like to use the base of their ear for manipulating their ears. I don't like to fold them. Um, I know I wouldn't like my ears folded, so I press on the base of the ear and push it forward. This is called a split ear head stall, so it goes in between the split. And then I press that forward and go over the left ear. Now by making this bridle a hole bigger, it makes all those actions easier and I don't have to pull on anything and make it uncomfortable for him in any way. Now I always do far ear, close ear. For me, I find that's the easiest way to organize and keep him. That way if I get this close ear on and he goes to look or shy, then I can still keep him coming towards me and get this left ear. Now, the adjustment I wanna make, I want this little shank bit to have one wrinkle in the corner of his mouth. So I'll tighten up his bridle, check the adjustment. I take time and organize the hair because I don't want any of the hair to be underneath his bridle and, and being uncomfortable in any way. I wanna talk about adjusting your curb strap. General rule of thumb is two fingers between the horse's jaw and your curb. You want about two inches of travel in your shanks when you pull them together before your curb starts to go to work. If it's tighter, your curb action will be too quick. And if it's too loose, your curb action is too slow. So again, that general rule of thumb is two fingers against your horse's jaw and that curb strap. Then I take my halter off. I've got my reins on my arm, all organized, and we're ready to go to work. <laughs>